Now let's look at our next ideal circuit element, the resistor. A resistor is a circuit element that has the property of resistance. which seems very self-referential, self okay, same kind of a circular definition, but what is resistance? Resistance is the property of a material that causes it to resist or impede the flow of current. So as a resistor is a circuit element that we use to model this property of resistance. Now just as with voltage sources and current sources, we need to represent what that element's going to look like. And a resistor we do like so. Once again, it's a circuit element with two terminals and we use these squiggly diagonal lines to represent our resistor with some resistance R. And just as we saw with voltage sources and current sources. Orientation means nothing. I can draw this vertically, horizontally, diagonally, it doesn't matter. The resistor is the same. We have to look and see how it's connected. Okay, now what does a resistor do? It resists the flow of current, but what does that mean? What it means is, as it resists the flow of current, it dissipates, the, it dissipates energy, it dissipates electrical energy, converts it into heat and or light. So electrical, a resistor converts electrical energy into heat and also if it gets hot enough, light. What's a very common familiar thing we all know about, uh, about a, a, you know, an example of resistor? Familiar appliance, an electric oven, right? You turn on an electric oven, you look in there and you see as the oven heats up, the coils get hot and they start to glow, they start to make light. So we are seeing electrical energy being converted into heat and also light as a byproduct as it heats up. So that's what resistors do. They convert electrical energy into heat. All right? Now, resistance is a property of the material. So depending upon the material you use to make that resistor, you can have different values of resistance. So for example, we all know that metal, we have a name for that. We all know that metal is a conductor of electricity. So we say metal's a conductor, that means it has low resistance. It allows current to flow very freely. On the other hand, we have other materials, for example, glass. Well, you guys probably know that glass does not conduct electricity. We call that an insulator. Or another way of saying that is, glass has very high resistance. It is a very poor conductor of electricity. Metal's a very good conductor of electricity. Now, in between these two is something we call a semiconductor which is basically halfway between a conductor and an insulator. So it is neither a, good neither a good conductor or a good insulator. And we see that semiconductors are used in things like transistors and diodes.
So any of you who go on and take more advanced courses in electronic design will learn all about those elements and the idea of a semiconductor, beyond the scope of this current class, however. And then finally, there's an ideal case. And there aren't many ideals in engineering or in science, but there's definitely one here. There is a superconductor. Certain metals and compounds, if lowered in temperature, become ideal conductors. They have zero resistance. So this is used, for example, in medical equipment and in physics and in other types of research. We will create superconductors. So it's actually possible to have an ideal conductor with zero resistance. In fact, if you want to become a very, very wealthy person, go into material science and see if you can figure out how to make a room temperature superconductor. And then you will be a very wealthy and famous person if you can get around the fact we have to refrigerate these, uh, these uh, superconductors to very low temperatures to make them work. All right, so we're familiar with this idea of conductors, insulators, low, high resistance. But now let's think about how we're going to define this mathematically. going to use Ohm's law. And that is one of our basic circuit laws, the first of our three basic circuit laws we're going to use this, during this entire course. Ohm's law shows us how to define voltage and current for a resistor. So let's say we have a resistor like so. Like any circuit element, we have to define a voltage and a current for it. So I'll do this. Here's the voltage. Here's the current. And we note, I am defining the voltage and the current according to the passive sign convention. The direction of the current is flowing into the positive end of the resistor. So the voltage and the current are defined according to the passive sign convention. Given this definition, Ohm's law, which incidentally is named after Ohm, the uh, Georg Simon Ohm who actually first described it, says the following. For any resistor, V is equal to I times R. The voltage is equal to the current times the resistance according to this passive sign convention definition. All right? So, resistance is described in terms of ohms, units of ohms. So, one volt must therefore be equal to one amp times one ohm. And notice the shorthand for ohms is omega, the Greek letter omega. So you'll see this unit used over and over again. All right? Now, looking at this, We must follow the passive sign convention for Ohm's law. So it is mandatory that the voltage and the current are defined by the passive sign convention. Resistances must always be either greater than or equal to zero. So you can't have a negative resistance. No such thing as a negative resistor. If you, could, if you could build one, you'd be violating the laws of thermodynamics. You could create free energy. So the resistance is greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, if I is greater than zero, then 
V must be greater than zero, right? Because that's a positive value. If that's positive, that's got to be positive. If on the other hand, if I is less than zero, then V must be less than zero. So either the voltage and the current are both positive or they're both negative since resistance can only be positive. This also says something else. Therefore, P is equal to V times I. Well, either they're both positive or they're both negative. But regardless, what does this tell us? That the power must be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, resistors can only have positive power. They can only absorb power. Resistors cannot generate power. They can only dissipate power. They can only absorb power. And once again, they do that by getting warm, by heating up as they dissipate that power. Okay, now along with this, we can move around this definition. We can say V is equal to I times R, but it's easy to do a little bit of algebra to this. If V is equal to I times R, then R must be equal to V over I. Ohms must be volts divided by amps. Or I must be equal to V over R. Amps must be equal to volts divided by ohms. And so these are all mathematically equivalent ways to express Ohm's law. Pretty simple algebra, pretty straightforward. Now along with resistance defined as ohms, there's another, resist, another definition you'll see. And that is the definition of conductance. Definition of conductance is that it's simply the reciprocal of resistance. And we define G as conductance. It has units of Siemens, and once again named after German researcher in electricity, Siemens. Or turns out Siemens was a fairly recent unit adopted by SI, by, 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 you know, by convention. It actually was adopted in the 20th century. And so before that, before there was a formal definition for conductance, people like me, especially guys like me who grew up in a different era, we basically simply wrote ohms backwards, called it Mohs. And you use units of an upside down ohm. So you just flip the omega upside down. Otherwise, you use Siemens, which would just be a capital S for its units. So if you look in old books and old papers, you'll see Mohs. But if you look in more modern books, then you'll see Siemens as the units, because this, I think, was adopted in the 50s or 60s when we formally adopted those units. All right? And once again, G is just equal to 1 over R by definition. And that means I can go through and say that 1 semen is equal to 1 ohm to the negative 1 power, just the inverse of an ohm. And along those same lines, we can go through and we can apply conductance instead of resistance to all the same circuit values. So in this case, I can go through and say that you know, V must be equal to I over G, for example, replacing here. And G is equal to I over V. Or I is equal to V times G. So once again, I can use this form of Ohm's law using conductance instead of resistance. Mathematically equivalent. Now, we defined power in resistors using P is equal to V times I, but let's go through and let's also do a couple little mathematical tricks here. Let's think about what power and resistance means.
for all resistors, in fact, all circuit elements, P is equal to V times I. As I said before, this is always true for any element. Let's take these definitions of V and I and let's go through and let's apply Ohm's law. If P is equal to V times I, then V is equal to I times R, which is equal to I squared times R. So I can write the power this way, V times I, or I can say it's I squared times R. Or it's equal to V times V over R, because I is equal to V over R, which is equal to V squared over R. And so I can define the, the power in a resistor using these terms, so these equations. And once again, look, power must always be positive. It doesn't matter whether the current or the voltage are positive or negative. Once you square them, it's always positive. And so once again, P must be greater than or equal to zero in any resistor. So you'll see these definitions used for power. And along the same line, P must be equal to I squared over G, or it's equal to V squared times G if we use the definition of conductance instead of the definition of resistance. And so we have those terms. So here are your basic definitions that define both the relationship between voltage and current across a resistor as well as the power of the resistor. All right, so next time we'll look at a few connection models and then we'll look at our first real circuit and start analyzing it.